Right everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. I thought I'd quickly come on in and give you my thoughts on what went wrong against Stoke because it looks like a few Sullen supporters, quite a few, have went into meltdown on Twitter. But you know what Twitter's like. Right things to look forward to on this channel. Me and Stephen has got a match preview up, probably tomorrow, for the Leicester game and also a Leicester match vlog. I'll be there, God help us. But before we get on with the rest of the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Listen, 57% of you that watch this channel are not even subscribed. It costs absolutely naught and it takes you two seconds to do so. Press the subscribe button. Right, I'm going to start things off with Tony Mowbray. Everybody is open to criticism when you've had a bad day at the office. And for me, that's exactly what it was. It was a bad day at the office. Uh, Tony Mowbray got the team selection wrong, let's I'll be honest. It's easy for me to sit here and say he got the team selection wrong after a defeat. Because if we win that game, he gets everything right. But it's not just Tony Mowbray who was open to criticism. The players were as well. Minus one or two. They played like it was a pre-season game. I'm not going to lie. There was no urgency about it. But we'll get onto that in a minute. Right, Tony Mowbray. He had strikers on the bench. And he decided to play not one of them. He decided uh, Roberts and Pritchard to lead the line. And I felt so sorry for Pritchard. The ball got played over the top numerous times. And down the channel for him to chase. And he's, got, he's not about that. Pritchard hasn't got pace. That's not his game. That's not why we like Pritchard in the starting eleven. And he was just getting outrun every time. And, and Stoke would get the ball and they would just recycle it and come again. And that, for me, was the, was very frustrating because we we conceded possession far too easily and numerous times. It was so sloppy in possession. It was unbelievable. Um, like I say, they played like it was a pre-season game. There was no urgency. There was no tempo. The passing... They were just lumping it up out the way. Listen, I absolutely love Ekwa, but he had a very bad game as well. The ball, every time it come to him, he was just head of a clear. He, wouldn't, he weren't being precise on his clearance, in my opinion. He was just getting rid of it. And then it would just come back at us. And it was so frustrating. His passing as well wasn't the best. We seriously, seriously missed Dan Neil. I'm not going to lie. That, that game was clear. And it was so evident to say how much... And how important Dan Neal is to our squad. We really did miss him. The midfield was just literally non-existent. I thought Job was... There was flash of, flashes of brilliance by Job. And I cannot wait to see what this kid's going to be like in one or two years' time. He was beating players left, right and centre. He was getting forward. For me, it was it was, it was frustrating game. It was, was a very frustrating game. Uh, Bar, I thought, had probably the worst game in a Southern shirt. I'm not going to lie. He was so weak in possession. Tony Mowbray has been banging on for weeks and weeks. Be physical, be strong. And I feel as if Barr was the total opposite. Every time he was out on the wing, a store player would just find it so easy to come, get to him, shrug him off the ball and come back down the wing. And it happened numerous times, I'm not going to lie. There was very little link-up play between him and Roberts, what we're expected to say, like little give and goes. I thought Roberts didn't have the best of games. Then, after the game, uh, Tony Mowbray blamed the weather in his press conference, which I wasn't buying that, let's be honest. Um, the, the, the majority of England got battered by the storm. Um, I did get his point where he was saying that a lot of our first-teamers came back from international duty and they had to adapt to their style of football after they've been with Ireland. Uh, the weather didn't help because we didn't have an, enough time on the p training pitch and stuff like that. But I wasn't really buying that because, the major like I said, the majority of England got battered by the storm. Right, like, let's get back to the striker situation as it's, we're being cursed all season along with it, let's be honest. Um, does Mowbray trust them? That's a question for years, lot. What do you reckon? Or are they just not ready yet? Listen, the full Sunderland fan base was screaming out that the changes need to be made, the subs need to be made. It clearly wasn't working. And they needed to be change, changes made at half-time. Um, Mowbray had done it about 65, 60 minutes, something like that. Um, now, for me personally, I would have started Burstow. A lot of fans are saying that he's not ready, he's not good enough, which that's all right, he's entitled to your opinion. But in the, in the last couple of games, I think it was the Sheffield Wednesday game that springs to mind especially, he was holding the ball up. Now, I got a comment on the video, on, on the live stream, and they were saying, Burstow, hold up, I'll wait, Giles, he'll give you a shake, or something like that, like, along them lines. And I was like, the only thing that's, Lacking in Burstow is his goals. That's it. For me, his hold-up play was brilliant. His work rate was brilliant. He won the penalty when he holding the ball up 
He turned the defender, he got behind, in behind, and he won that penalty. So his hold of play was decent. And also, look at the pass he did for Jack Clark. My God, he pinned that pass perfectly, and he got an assist. Jack Clark went on to score. So his work rate's there. Everything is there other than the goals. And that'll come in game time. He hasn't had that much game time, bearing in mind. None of these lads have, really, the strikers, let's be honest. Uh, you had Roosan on the bench as well. He, he, I watched him in pre-season. He looked very good. He looked direct. He looked piercy as well. Then balls over the top for Pritchard and down the channel would have been perfect for Roosan. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Hermia, listen, that's one player who I do think isn't ready. I, I really do. I, I, at the beginning of the season, I had high expectations for him. Um, it, we were playing to his strengths. We were putting balls in the box and he was winning headers and he did look good. He looked like a... A big physical presence up front. Um, but <laughs> come the start of the season, it just hasn't worked. Yes, but probably haven't been playing to his strength. And he's probably been given extra instruction to drop deep. And so when he's dropping deep, he just hasn't been there. But no, nah, I, I, I just didn't think he's ready, to be honest. I watched Priest uh, under 21's game and he just didn't look up to scratch with the speed of the game. He was dropping deep. When the, when the lads were getting down the wing, obviously because he was dropping deep, the balls were put there and he just wasn't there. Sometimes in the game, in the championship games where he's been in, I've watched Dan Neil giving him instructions, telling him to get further up the pitch as he was just wandering far too deep down. Now, listen, he will come good eventually. He's got all the attributes there. He just needs more game time. Now, we've got to see more time, more of, of Rusin as well. We've got to see more of Rusin. The Stoke goals, oh my God, this is just typical of Sunderland, how they were playing. Like I said previous in this video, it was like a pre-season game. And when they got their goal from Sunderland, clearing the lines, just getting rid of it, um, one of the Stoke players done like a back kick. Ballard, and I didn't know who it was, but went up for the ball. It looked like it fell on first viewing of, the, of it. Because Ballard, the way Ballard did come down, but nonetheless, it bounced through to the store player. Looked like a handball, great finish, and that's how they got their goal. Our goal came from, like I said, there was one or two players who did shine, and Bellingham was one of them. Yes, he died off near the end of the game, but Bellingham looked great on the ball. It looked like it, this 1.5 million what we paid for him it was pittance. Put it that way. There were six and sevens they were all over the shop, and he got down into the box. Great bit of skill. Got the shot away. The keeper had to try and parry it out and it was just fell to Jack Clark to put it away. And Jack Clark got his goal. So then, then there was one more and I thought, right now we can press on. But Sunderland just fell back into the trap of just gone through the motions of the game. There was, there was so slow. The passing was slow. We needed the urgency about them and there was just none of it. Then their, their goal came from a set piece. Now, with the height in our team, we are always going to be susceptible to a set piece. With Huggins being five foot and out, then you've got Hume who isn't the tallest, or nine isn't the tallest. Uh, Ballard's six foot one, so we're not the biggest. And the man marking for the goal and all was, uh, you know, you, you didn't have Huggins marking McNally. He's, he's you know, there's about three days difference in height, and I just couldn't understand why Edward didn't gun up and see Huggins get on the near post. I'll mark him. Regardless, the marking was wrong for me get for that goal. It was just ball came in, easy header, and it was two one. And we just didn't have any answer for that. Even the subs didn't make a change and uh, make a difference. Um, I wasn't... Listen, I'm not going to criticise Stoke because they, they, they got the three points in the end. We were very, very poor. Probably our worst game we've played. One of, I'd say, one of our worst games we've played. Um, like playing over the 90 minutes with, say, knee interference by the referee. Or no, I thought the referee was good. Obviously, that was the linesman what missed the handball. It wasn't the referee. was behind the player. So, for me... The linesman got that wrong, but the referee himself, he, he, yeah, it wasn't as, it wasn't a, one of the worst referees we've had. Put it that way. Sunderland were very poor. Stoke weren't really good. I'm not going to lie. Stoke weren't the best, and I think Stoke will struggle this season. We are sixth in the league at the minute. We've been doing really well. If we can just iron out a few kinks, the striker situation being one of them, then I think we'll be all right. But I've got, I've got Dan Nate to come back straight back into the team for me. Hundred percent back into the team. I'll probably have, anyway, I'll keep that for the match preview, nonetheless, because that's, that's just going to spoil the preview. But listen, it was a bad day at the office. Mowbray is open to criticism. Yes, should he gone? Hell no. No chance. Not after what? Let, let us put it into perspective. Yes, that's back-to-back -back defeats. But before that, we'd only lost one in eight. 
one in eight, draw and one, winning the rest. Draw and one, winning the rest. That, that just shows you how good we've been. It's just a bad day at the office. I wouldn't be calling for his head at all. Listen, it was a bad day at the office. The players pull a piss poor performance in. They need, they need to correct that. It's going to be a better game against Leicester. Leicester are going to come for us. It's going to be open game. That's the type of teams we like to play. What we'll suit our player. But that's it. What do you reckon? What do you think went wrong? Comment below and let us know. Hit the thumbs up like I say. Subscribe. We've got loads of giveaways coming. See you in the match preview for Leicester.